Hello and welcome back to Let's Make an Atari 2600 game. In this episode I've added sound. And transitions. Right, so this episode, where do I start? Well, I wanted to add the three extra voices you can get with a DPC sound chip. But it's not possible with using um, Batari Basic to, to write your game. You actually have to update the sound something like 100 or 200 times every frame to get those three extra voices. And it's just not supported by, by Batari Basic. But, you know, if I make another game, I'll probably make it completely in assembly now that I'm learning assembly through with Batari Basic. And I might actually implement it then. But for now, it has to be the stock Atari sounds. Now, where do you start with a stock Atari sounds? Well, if you want buzz or a purest pure tone, the Atari has got you covered. The TIA, which is the television interface and sound chip, it's designed for sound effects. It's not designed for music. So sometimes you can't even find a note, like a note isn't even represented uh, by the Atari with its sound chip and its various frequencies. So it, the music can kind of sound a bit out of tune if you do write music with it. But the sounds, they're all right. They sound like uh, traditional Atari sounds. So what kind of sound can you make with an Atari? Well, it just so happens you can download Visual Batari Basic, which is a integrated development environment for Batari Basic. And it has a music and sound generator in it. I'll just demonstrate that and I'll show you what the kind of sounds you can make with the Atari are. Here's the interface that Visual Batari Basic uses uh, for sound and music generation. So you have 15 sounds, or 15 instruments, I guess you could call them, that the Atari uses. But some of them are duplicated and some of them don't make any sound. So you, you only actually have a, a small handful that you can use. Um, and here's an example of the sounds the Atari makes. This is the pure sound. As good as this interface is to demonstrate the sound, it's really not that great for writing music with. It generates data for you to stick into your Atari program, but it's hard to compose on. So that's the pure tone I was talking about. I mean, that is pure. Ah, uh, it hurts. It hurts with its pureness. <laughs> Here is the other pure tone. It goes a bit lower than the, uh, the last one I demonstrated. If you need an A3, well, you're out of luck. And these uh, these show how out of tune these notes are. So this is in cents. So this one's negative 17 plus 18. So this is the closest match note that this sound has. And you can see if you make music out of this, it's going to be really out of tune. So out of tune, you probably notice it. All right, now buzz, something else the Atari sound chip does really well. some more, even lower. That's a pretty unique sound, I have to say. It's probably why people harvest the, the Atari sound chips to, to make musical instruments out of them. All right, reedy. Electronic rumble. Now expert mode, that just lets you select any of the sound that the Atari has and there's no, there's no notes. So you can just go here and say, right, I want tone 15 at 8. Now the higher you go in the frequency, the lower the sound goes. So up here we're going to have this ear piercing shrill. And down here we'll have something that's just rumbly. And each instrument will they'll have a different sound. What is that? That could be a helicopter, maybe? Motorcycle? Most of the sounds, they sort of come into their own at a certain range. Let me get a little... Ah. 
Wow. So you can just go through, click through here, find a sound that you think is a good base uh, for what you're trying to make and go with it in the Atari. Now the Atari, it will make a sound when you tell it to make a sound. So if I said, all right, Atari, I want tone six at 10. The Atari will play that constantly and it will never stop. So you actually have to program your own audio driver to tell the Atari, all right, I want this at tone 10 for this number of frames and then I want you to change the volume or the frequency or something like that. And that's how people make music with the Atari. It's a real pain to write because the Atari doesn't give you anything. All it does, it'll play the sound for you. You tell it to play the sound, it's gonna play the sound. But it's up to you to change everything about the sounds, the frequencies, the tones, everything. You have to write everything. So that's sort of the problem I've run into. I wrote my own sound driver because you have to. And that took a lot of space. And that space, I've been talking about this the last few episodes. I've actually run out. I only have about 600 bytes left. And that's not enough for me to finish my game how I envisioned it. Because I had to write a sound driver. I had no idea. Next time, you know, usually I leave sound to the end. Um, this is an instance where I probably should have tried generating sound early on so I could have seen how involved it actually is. Right, so let's get back to the game and the sounds I've used so far. Okay, here we are back in the game. Now I've added sounds for shooting, for getting hit, uh, for dying, and for picking things up. I'll get back to that picking up thing in a second. See if I can find something to shoot at. I think I've already cleared this area out. All right, well, I'm dead. Well, there you go, here's a dead sound. I guess while I'm here, I should explain the other changes I've made to the title screen. So here you can select uh, what character you want to be. Now there's only two at the moment, because that's all the space I have. Um, but I'm expecting maybe four or five characters you can choose from. And below that is your score of your last game. So we'll go with the archer. There's a transition between levels now. And some sounds for shooting. Also, we can just walk up and hit them. And there's a sound for them hitting you as well. Whoops, I killed him. There's also sounds for changing your inventory. Let's go stab him. Those blobs are totally overpowered. But so is the sword, so it kind of evens out. Now, I've also added a uh, treasure that can be weapons. I've just got to find it. I've only added one. It's, a, it's another bow. Oh, man. It's another bow with the power of the sword. So it's actually, there it is. So it's quite overpowered. Since that blob is so far away, if I, cha if I charge him with my sword, he's going to trash me, so. Ah. No, no, wait. There's also a sound for using potions. Okay, he's dead. So this bow is a better bow than the one I'm carrying, so it will automatically update my bow when I walk over it. It'll discard my bow and it'll add this one. There. So now I've got a blue bow and my original bow is no longer in my inventory. This has completely replaced it because it's just, it's better all around. Now I can really take them out. That added inventory management, the sound driver, the sounds, Everything I've had to add, it's just, it's eaten up all the space. But I was able to get a ending, well not really an ending, it's, it's an alternate title screen for when you win the game. So you can win the game. If I picked up that little chalice there, the game would end. But I won't do that because it'll spoil it. This chalice right here. If I pick that up, the game is won. Obviously, when I finish the game, it won't be this simple to just walk and grab the, the thing and win. But for now, that's how I'm testing it. So the entire game is in, the entire engine is here. But I don't have enough space to make it interesting. So what I'm going to do is, oh, I think it's pretty dramatic. Now, in any level, the maximum you can have, like for example, right here, the maximum you have are three, oh, I'm dead. Well, the maximum you can have are three enemies. 
But I feel like it's too easy to stand in the doorway. Even though I got killed right there because I wasn't paying attention. Let's try character number two. This poor guy gets destroyed by blobs. Because I felt it was too easy just to stand in the doorway and just shoot stuff all the time. At least with the archer. So I think what I think I can do is I'll remove one of those monsters. I'll remove monster three. And then I'll save up a lot of ROM space because I have to duplicate a lot of code with three monsters. It's too... Oh wait, a warrior with a bow. That's pretty overpowered. Let's, let's grab it. Oh yeah. Um, so I have to duplicate a lot of code with three monsters because there's an overhead uh, with processing time calling subprograms for everything. A lot of times you have to duplicate your code instead of tucking it away in a subprogram. And that's what I have to do with a lot of these monsters. Even since there's three monsters, I have to write three different AI routines or three of the same AI routines, slightly different for each different monster. And that's taking up a lot of space. Also, I feel like when you walk through a level here, like here I am, I can just stare at this blob or staring each other down, I get the first shot, he's, he's a goner. I feel like when Stooge walk through the door, most of the time I just stand in the doorway and just blast anything that's in the room. And I don't stand a chance. So what I'll do is I'll remove Monster 3, I'll reclaim all the ROM space that that was using, and I'll make the game real time. So when you walk through a door, they're gonna start, they're gonna start attacking you right away. You're gonna have to move and be nimble and on your feet. Let's go down deeper. So like, for example, if I came in this room right now, these guys are sort of standing here. But if I start, if I made this real time, they just start attacking you right away and you have to start thinking quickly. So I think even though I'm removing one monster because I'm making it real time, I think it'll put more pressure on the player and it'll be more interesting. And I'll have enough ROM space to add many more items and monsters. So the game should be more compelling. But I don't know, as it stands now, I don't have enough space to finish it, so I have to cut something. And I think making the game real time and taking out one monster would solve two problems. It would make the gameplay more compelling and it would give me a lot of extra space. So that's it for now. Um, I've added the sounds. I wrote my own sound driver and the inventory code and things this week. That took up the rest of the, the game. The game's now full and I need to cut some features and trim some fat to, to make it the game I was hoping for originally. So that's what I'll be doing this week. I guess I was a bit naive to say I was close to finishing. Maybe I'm close to finish now. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, so next week, this game will be real time. We'll, one down, we'll be down one monster, but I think overall the game will be improved. So thanks for subscribing. I don't know anybody personally who has any interest in me explaining how I'm doing this. So it's always fun to see someone subscribe and have a similar interest.